Welcome to a very different kind of mini air crash investigation video. On this channel, usually we take a cold hard analytical look at air crashes and aviation safety, just the facts and nothing else. But there's so much out there that we don't understand or barely comprehend. So for today, let's open our minds to the possibility of extraterrestrials and the paranormal. I've talked about Eastern Airlines Flight 401 before. In fact, I've made an entire video about it, but what I did not talk about in that video is what happened after the crash. After the plane crashed on the 29th of December 1972, the plane was relatively intact due to the marsh cushioning the impact and due to the plane being in a relatively slow, shallow descent. A lot of the parts of the plane were salvageable, and after the accidents, those salvaged parts went into other Eastern Airlines planes, and that's when the sightings began. One morning, as a flight engineer went about his duties, doing pre-flight checklists for an upcoming flight, Second Officer Don Repo walks in and tells him to not worry and that he had done all the pre-flight checklists. Any other flight engineer would have been relieved about the relaxed workload, but not this one because First Officer Don Repo was on Eastern Airlines Flight 401 and he never made it off. On another instance, a flight attendant was walking up to the cockpit and she saw a flight engineer fixing the oven on the plane. When she got to the cockpit, she asked the First Officer about the flight engineer. She was informed that there were no flight engineers on board the plane, but she was insistent. She was later shown pictures of the crew of Flight 401 and she picked out Don Repo as the man that she had seen. Interestingly enough, the galley where Don Repo was seen was salvaged from Flight 401. Don Repo has been seen on several other instances. An experienced captain stated that second officer Repo had appeared and spoken to him saying, there will never be another crash, we will not let it happen. It's not just captains and flight attendants who have seen things. The vice president of Eastern Airlines walked into the first class section of an Eastern Airlines plane to find that a captain was seated there. He just assumed that that was the captain for this flight, and he did not think much of it. But soon afterward, the man that he saw disappeared in front of his eyes. And the man that he had seen? Bob Luft, captain of Flight 401. There were many sightings of the two. Don Repo was also seen in the bay of a plane, the exact same place where he was as the plane went down. In some cases, the apparition of Don would tell people about mechanical faults with the plane. In one instance, the face of Don Repo appeared in an oven and warned of problems with the airplane, and coincidentally, that plane did develop problems with its engine later on in the flight. The story of Flight 401 is littered with stories like this. It's been decades since the crash and unfortunately, we have no way of telling what's fiction and what's fact anymore. In a way, it's kind of poetic, don't you think? They could not save their plane, but they kept looking out for others, making sure that no one else met their fate. I guess that's touching in its own way. There's so much that we don't know about the world and the universe at large. Why are we here? What's our purpose? What happens after all of this? For centuries, we have hypothesized about the possibility of life on other worlds. At one point, people looked at the canyons on Mars and thought that they were canals built by intelligent life on the surface of Mars. When men went to the moon, they were put in quarantine just to be safe. I mean, who knew what they could be carrying? Over the years, people have claimed to see aliens and flying saucers and everything in between. But when the US Navy steps up and says that they don't know what they're looking at, that's when you start paying attention. Earlier this year, the US Navy confirmed the existence of footage allegedly showing UFOs. A lot of this footage was leaked years ago, but this is the first time that the US Navy has acknowledged it and they have no idea what it is. They call it an identified aerial phenomena, but I'm gonna go ahead and call them UFOs. One day back in 2004, Two F-18s piloted by Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate were in the Pacific on a routine training mission. Soon the radios crackled to life. An operations officer aboard the US Navy cruiser USS Princeton wanted to know if they were carrying weapons. Weird. This was a training mission and things looked like they were heating up. Two Cadam 9s, Fravor replied. The Cadam 9 was a dummy missile that could not be fired. The planes weren't armed. I mean, they weren't really expecting hostile aircraft near San Diego in 2004. The radio operator on the USS Princeton said, we've got a real world vector for you. He then proceeded to fill in the pilots about what they had been tracking for the past few weeks. 
For the past few weeks, the Princeton had been tracking mysterious aircraft. They'd show up out of the blue at 80,000 feet, and then they'd hurtle towards the sea, stopping at 20,000 feet. At this point, they'd usually drop off their radar screens or shoot right back up. This time, they had aerial assets in the area. Today, Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate were tasked with investigating this mysterious, unidentified flying object. The F-18s turned towards their new vectors. On the USS Princeton, the jets and the mysterious object got closer and closer. As their radar plots merged, the pilots searched for the elusive mystery object that they had been sent to intercept. At first, they couldn't see anything. Their radars were clear. Then Commander Fravor looked down at the sea. It was calm that day, but the waves were breaking over something that was just below the surface. Here's an excerpt of the Fighter Pilot podcast where he talks about his encounter with the object. He began a circling descent to take a better look. The object in question began to climb as if to meet him halfway. He then headed straight for the object, but that spooked whatever it was. It accelerated like nothing I've ever seen. Let's listen to his account. So as we're looking out, you know, you know, we, you know, the heads start coming out because we're looking to see where this thing is at. And as we look down off the right side of the airplane, we see, so we'd be at the six o'clock position of a clock and this object would be in the middle. We look down and what it looks like is there's something like a sea mount under the water because it's a no white caps, beautiful, clear day. And there's just this white water. And if you've seen a seamount, which I know you have, mm -hmm. uh, where the waves come in, they just break over this in the middle of the ocean. And, and it tells you there's probably something under the surface, you know, right. for navigators to stay away. So we kind of see this. And as we're looking, uh, the backseater in the other airplane, Jim Slate Clean, mm -hmm. goes, hey, Skipper, do you? And right about he gets the do you, I'm looking and I see this little white object. It's kind of randomly moving around the disturbance under the water. Now, it's important the disturbance, think of it as, what we first thought is, you know, it looked kind of like a 737 size-wise, pointing to the east, all right? So it looked like it had kind of wings, you know, like shapes, like a cross, mm -hmm. was the way the disturbance was set up. And the little the little white tic-tac is what we refer to it as, because that's what it looked like, was kind of going north-south and then east-west, but it wasn't changing its direction. It was elongated to the north-south, so the longitudinal axis of this thing was pointing north. Okay. So the first thing you think is, oh, it's a helicopter, Right. So as we're looking at it, and he goes, hey, do you see what the... And I go, yeah, what the hell is that? And and we're looking. What's your altitude at this point? Uh, we're at about 20,000 feet. Okay. So we're looking down. There's no rotor wash. There's no wings. It literally looks like a Tic Tac, and it's just flopping around, right? Mm -hmm. So we're like, that's kind of weird. So as we move around towards about the 9 o'clock position, uh, I decide, hey, I'm going to go check that out. <laughs> of course. So, <laughs> hey... So the other the other pilot says, hey, I'm going to stay up high. I said, that's perfect. Just stay up here. Just mirror us. And I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i go down. So we're, we're having all this comms. And I'm also talking on the intercom mm -hmm. to uh, my backseater. And we're both, you know, kind of like, dude, what is that? And we have no idea. So at about the 9 o'clock position, we start that slow descent. And uh, as we get around to the 12 o'clock, and we're watching this. So this whole evolution is going to take about five minutes. Because, you know, if we're only doing about 300 knots. We're just sure. kind of saving gas. So we get to about the 12 o'clock position, and the thing, which is, had been pointing north-south, basically just turns, so now it kind of, the longitudinal axis is kind of pointing to the west, and it starts mirroring us. So we're in a slow descent, clockwise flow, and it's coming up the same way. So it's, this thing's been in a hover right over the water with no rotor washing, and then all of a sudden it goes, whoop, and starts climbing. And as we start pulling nose up, the thing rapidly accelerates, like, from just this nice, easy kind of mirroring our speed to, poof, it's gone as it crosses our nose, it just disappears. So we're like, I go, I asked the other airplane, I go, hey, do you guys see that? And they're like, it's gone. We have no, now keep in mind, they're still above us. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, we have different perspectives of the object and the object, we both see it just take off and disappear. So, all right, now I'm pretty weirded out. So I said, hey, well, let's turn around and see what was in the water because we're right there. Mm -hmm. So we basically just turned the airplanes around real quick and there's nothing. There's no disturbance. There's no white water. As far as you can see, there's nothing. After this, the pilots radioed back to the USS Princeton. They were vectored to their rendezvous point, which was 60 miles away. As they headed towards their rendezvous point, the radio crackled to life again. Sir, you won't believe it, the radio operator said. But that thing, it's at your cap point. The cap point was their rendezvous point. Quote, we were at least 40 miles away, and in less than a minute, this thing was already at our cap point, said Commander Fravor in an interview. I'd like to play another clip from the podcast about how this thing moved. This is kind of odd. We've got something that we have, we can't control. We can't, you know, for the performance of it, you know, anything that hovers like that does not accelerate like, you know, and you've sure. seen 
you know, I've seen airplanes doing 1.8 going by me, doing the high fast, like at Top Gun, where guys are, you know, you just see the cons coming. Mm -hmm. But to to see something that literally accelerates, because even if you go to Mach 2, think of a rocket that takes off, you watch it, and those things accelerate relatively quick, but you watch them for a significant period of time. This thing literally disappeared in a matter of, you know, less than a second. It was in front of me, and it was gone. These were just two small clips from the podcast. I'll have the entire episode linked below in the description. By the time they got to their rendezvous point, the object was gone. Captain Fravor and Slate went back to the Nimitz. On being asked what he saw, Fravor replied, I have no idea what I saw. It had no plumes, wings, or rotors and outran our F-18s. But he added, I want to fly one. So what do you think? Do you think we're alone in the vastness of space? What do you think Commander Fravor encountered that day in 2004? Me, personally, I do believe in aliens. The universe is vast and there are literally trillions of planets out there. They're out there. Maybe we'll find them one day. Or maybe they'll find us. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. A big thank you to Ryan Bomar and the Fighter Pilot Podcast for letting me use their amazing media sources. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. You guys have a wonderful, safe Halloween. Stay safe. I'll catch you guys next time.